When we're working with enums in C Sharp, we get something that feels like a string and like an integer. And this gets kind of interesting when we think about serialization. So when we're trying to save enum data to something and then have ways to restore it, or if we're trying to think about how we transfer enum data, we need to be able to convert the enum value into something else so that we can send it. Now, the question that we're often faced with is, well, should we send the string version of the enum or should we send the integer or numeric version of the enum? Everyone's going to have different opinions about this. I think I have my own, but instead of just telling you what I think, I wanted to be able to walk through some pros and cons of doing different things with serializing enums. If you haven't checked out my first video on enums, I'll link it right up here. You can go check that out first, come right back and hopefully this will continue on in that series. And a quick reminder right before I go to Visual Studio, check out that pinned comment for my free weekly newsletter. All right, let's jump over to the code. In Visual Studio, I have an enum called products here, and this is an example of an enum that I probably would not recommend that you create. So if you watch the first video, I talked about enums ideally being something that's not going to change at all or I very often, right? If you're going to have to change it, ideally it's not happening often. And if you think about something like products, think about me as someone that might want to be creating products as a content creator. If I'm creating products, odds are I probably want to be able to expand my product offering over time. And if we just have a quick look through this example that we have here, you can see that I have my brag document template here. I have my design patterns ebook. And if I wanted to make more ebooks, I would have to go find ways to add these in. You can see that I have my dome train course here and two others that I'm working on right now. I also have this free course that I made for introductory to programming. But if I want to keep adding more, so if I want to do more work with Nick Chapsis and add more dome train courses, that's going to mean that I have to keep adding things into this. And what happens if I want to discontinue offering products? Well, I'm going to have to remove entries from this product enum. So I wanted to frame this up, not because this is how I recommend you create and use enums, but this is how I see people using it. I'm going to create follow-up videos on how I would try to work around this kind of thing, but I also wanted to share with you how I think that you can navigate this with respect to serialization if you have something like this in your code base already and it's not trivial for you to get rid of it. I think a lot of the time us content creators we're trying to teach you like the ideal ways to do things but the reality is if you're already working in a code base that's doing this you're going to have a lot of work ahead of you to get to that sort of clean state that we're talking about. So if you're stuck with an enum like this and you're trying to think about serialization, if you're unable to get through all of the refactoring ahead of time, this is going to be some stuff that I want you to think about. Now, I mentioned at the beginning of this video that when we're looking at this enum that we have here, we could think about this enum in terms of the different values as strings, right? So this brag document template could be like you could look at it like a string version, right? If we're serializing it or we know that enum values are automatically incremented if we haven't assigned values starting at zero. So brag document template is equivalent to the value zero design patterns, ebook one, so on and so forth, incrementing by one up until intro to programming course. So that means when we're serializing, we have two obvious ways that we could work with string or numeric representation. You could probably come up with other ways too. Like if you wanted to uh, truly serialize this into bytes and you wanted to encode it some way, we're talking about another transform on top of that, but you're probably looking at a string or numeric representation. Now I wrote a comment below this enum that has some different ideas that we're going to walk through as a thought exercise. And I wanted to do this because I want you to be thinking through this with me as I try to explain my perspective. Again, the goal of this video is not for me to tell you like, I absolutely think you have to store and serialize these as numeric values, or you must always use strings for that. I have an opinion. I want to go through this exercise with you so you can create your own. Okay, let me expand this comment and we'll start going through this list. So if we're serializing enums, and I mean serializing in the sense of being able to transfer that data, whether that's to some other location or into persistent state, and then being able to recover it. So it's kind of synonymous in this case. But if we're trying to serialize enum values, I want you to think about what happens if we rename them. In the situation where we're talking about these product lists, if I want to rename my brag document template, and I decided, well, in my brag document template, I refer to it as a highlight tracker. 
I really don't like calling it a brag document. I just think that some people recognize it as that. If one day I decided, no thanks, we're not going with brag document anymore, we are using Highlight Tracker. I want you to think about this. If we were serializing our products and every instance that was serialized had brag document written out as a string, well, what's going to happen now? Well, that enum no longer exists in our code. If we were doing some type of parsing to be able to recover that enum from a serialized state, we wouldn't easily be able to put it back to a product. So we could still do it. It's not that it's wrong or it's impossible. It's just that we would have to write code at the different locations that are responsible for serializing and deserializing to know that if we have brag document template, that now needs to be converted into highlight tracker template. So you end up creating some type of code that has to live on for forever to basically do enum migration. Now, in this particular case, if we wrote that out as a numeric value, we could effectively rename the values inside of this enum and the numbers are still going to line up. So in this case, numeric values would still be helpful for us and we would be able to rename. Now, in either case, again, if you watch the earlier video, when you're changing enums at all, a lot of your code base has to be able to update with that. So if you're unable to control all of the references to this enum, it's going to be a little bit hectic to do a refactor, even to rename something, because you might have to go update many projects and maybe different things compiling at different times. So it could be a lot more challenging depending on how complex your code is and how widespread the enum use is. But let's move on from that example. Let's talk about reordering things. So that's the next thought exercise here. If I said, well, how I'm using my enum, I actually want to be able to reorganize this a little bit. I want to put my courses at the beginning. So I'm going to move these two right to the end, have my courses first, put the highlight tracker there. And then that way, uh, because maybe I'm done making courses, I want to keep adding eBooks and just appending them because that feels good. Well, what's going to happen if we have our enum like this? If we had already serialized data, so let's say we have a database, we could have uh, a client and a server that are now mismatch in versions. Uh, and that way they have different versions of the enum on each side. Like that's this is the exercise I want you to be thinking about. Um, it's a little bit easier, I think, to think about maybe like a database and trying to, to save and load that data. So if you save these out to the database before doing the reorder and it was as a string, is that going to be an issue at all here? Well, probably not because in this case, we're still dealing with the same strings in terms of the enum names. They're just in a different order, but we didn't care about the order. We stored the string. But if you were dealing with a numeric value, it's kind of the opposite of the first example we looked at. What's going to be happening here is that anything that is a different number has to be remapped you would need to know what sort of version of your enum you're dealing with to be able to do the proper mapping. And if you had done both of these things, so you had gone through a period of time where you renamed things, you would have some code that has to know, hey, that brag document template is now highlight tracker. And then later on you go reorder. Now you have to have that kind of versioning logic built in as well. And if you have this kind of stuff in multiple spots, which I don't recommend, but if you do, now you have to update multiple spots to be able to support this. We've only gone through two different alterations of this enum, and you can see that it gets pretty complicated pretty fast. Let's move on to the next. So if we want to remove something, so one day I decide, well, I don't want to give away my highlight tracker template anymore. I'm over that. I'm, I'm only going to focus on programming things and not, you know, software engineering tips. So I want to go and delete this right out of here, right? Or maybe I want to get rid of my course that I'm giving away for free, this intro to programming course. Everything is paid for now. Drop the free courses. So I get rid of this. If we were dealing with strings, what happens now? Right. So we have a database that has some entry in there and it has intro to programming course as a string. Well, if I try to restore that and parse that back to get this enum value, that's not going to work. That string no longer maps to an enum value. So this is another example where we'd have to write some custom logic to handle that. So you need to decide in your business logic, what do you do when you have something that existed that doesn't exist anymore? Or do you write some code that goes and purges that from your database and handle that separately so that you never run into this in code? Either way, you have to do something to handle this. If we were dealing with numeric values, it's the same thing. In fact, it's a little bit worse. 
because not only do we not have that numeric value mapping to intro to programming course, we have that numeric value mapping to the next thing, right? So highlight tracker template now becomes the same value that intro to programming course was because everything shifted up by one. So again, you would need to either go run something across your database to update the enum values, or you would need to make sure that you have something in your code that can handle that as sort of a migration. So let me undo that one and let's talk about the next one if we're appending something. So if we're appending, so I say, okay, it's time for a new ebook. What's a good ebook to make? Well, maybe to go along with the course that I have on Dome Train already, I'm gonna create refactoring techniques ebook. That'll be the new thing that I add right on to the end of this. Well, if we were serializing and storing stuff as the string values, there would be nothing that it would have existed with refactoring techniques ebook. So we can go ahead and add this right to the end of our enum. That works pretty well. In fact, the numeric version is very similar too, because we would have had nothing that was set to be that numeric value now that it's at the end, right? So currently we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So nothing in the database would be refactoring techniques ebook as a string or products with the enum value of six. So appending things to the end of the enum is kind of nice. It seems to work in either case and we have a bit of flexibility there. That's something to keep in mind if you're doing this kind of thing. Now, what about inserting? So I had mentioned that I wanted to move the eBooks to the end because I was done with courses, but now I changed my mind because Nick Chaps approached me and said, hey, there's another cool dome train course I want you to do and you gotta get recording it. So I go, okay, cool, I'm gonna do secret dome train course three, I want to group them together, right? We saw that appending works really nicely, but if I'm being stubborn and I say, nope, I want to read it in order, and that means I have to insert the value into this enum, what's going to happen with respect to strings and integers and serialization? Well, if we were dealing with strings, we had nothing that was secret dome train course three. So we don't really have a serialization issue if we're trying to read stuff back from the database. Nothing would have existed like that. But again, if we had a numeric value, we've gone ahead and shifted everything, right? So everything that was after secret dome train course two, we put secret dome train course three right there. Everything after that is up by one. So we would have to go run some type of migration across the data or build code migration in to be able to handle this different enum version. So now our products enum is in this state. And this last one that I have is if we wanna change the value. And I'm not gonna necessarily go in depth on this one because this seems to be, I would call like more of a rare case that you would do. But if you had manually been assigning values to these things, instead of moving them around and reordering them, you might say like, I just wanna change all of my courses to be, you know, um, in the 100 series, all of my ebooks to be in the, the 500 series. So you'd have like your ebook starting at 500, the next one at 501, that kind of thing. If you wanted to do that uh, and change your mind midway, the same type of thing that we've already seen happens. If we're dealing with strings in that case, the numeric value changing doesn't really bother us. Strings have that advantage in that particular case. Now, integer values, the numeric value of the enum clearly would break. We would have a really complex migration to build into the code, or we would have to go change the values in our database to be able to get updated one time and then use our code along with that. So as you can see, we only compared strings and numeric versions in some simple cases here, literally just from changing the value of the enum, the different values that we have inside of it. So. You can see that it's complex already. We have pros and cons to either case, strings and integers. We haven't even touched about the fact that like strings might take more storage space or you know, more bytes to transmit, uh, integers would be less. Um, you have different things to consider completely outside of what we just talked about. So that's why I don't wanna prescribe to you that like this is the one way to do it. I want you to think about what your current use case is in your code base and take some steps to be able to make it incrementally better. So now that we've seen this, and if you've gone ahead and watched that first video that I linked at the beginning of this one, you'll know that my ideal state is for us to be able to have enums that are not changing ever, but sometimes that's easier said than done. And if you can't guarantee that, I want you to be able to think about minimizing the surface area where our enums are used. So if you want to see more about how to do that, check this video out next. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.